It took some time. It took a lot of time, but the factory is complete. Everything is working to create the first two items from phase four in a completely automated way. And not quite at peak efficiency because I need to rework some of the, the routes to where the supplies are coming in. Make sure that they are they are producing a little bit more. But that shouldn't be too difficult with the Mark III Miner and maybe even using drones. So really it's just a matter of waiting and setting up the last two pieces, especially the nuclear pasta. Is what I would say, except you can see right now, uh, yeah, my power grid is... Is not doing too hot. <laughs> so... I, uh, sort of, bef before I do anything else, I need to either start working on nuclear power, or I'm thinking right now, since I have it unlocked and I haven't really used it too much, geothermal generator. I've got a few of these, and it should be as simple as just setting them up to give me, what, I want to say like a couple thousand extra Morrowinds here, and that should, at least for the time being, get me through, you know until I have actual nuclear energy set up because even right now I am sort of on a a timer because a lot of the the way that I've been creating power right now is using turbo fuel which has been working great and everything but now I'm starting to use sulfur to create sulfuric acid which is then going into creating batteries of which I'm creating way more batteries than I actually need to to make the uh, whatever this thing is the um electromagnetic generator or something like that but uh I, I am planning to also do a bunch of drone stuff and that uses batteries as fuel so the eventual plan is to i i, I mean it is i i like the monorails and everything but i do think that the drones are probably they're clearly the route that the developers are pushing you towards in in terms of of actual raw resource delivery at this point in time but before we start our, our fun adventure of trying to go find a bunch of geysers, uh, let's take a look at, at the, like the actual top floor, of or the third floor specifically, of the, the factory here. Because now that this is entirely complete, you can see it is, it is a little bit different from what I originally planned. The whole thing where I was... Uh, that whole thing where I was going to try and like do the merging and everything up on this floor did not work out. It just... It just didn't, because I, I realized that trying to, you know, it, pool resources to a maximum of 780, then catching the overflow and everything was, is, first off, kind of an annoying amount of numbers that I have to keep juggled there. But the other thing is that it is, it, it means that if I do add anything new, then everything has to be reworked and that, that is, is that... It's because if any part of the line is different, if any part of the line requires more resources, less resources, all that sort of stuff, everything has to be reworked. So what I'm doing instead is that I have a, a very uh, particular way. All, all, of the, all of the ways that the, the resources are being divvied up are done on the floor right next to the production. So, for example, this here, creating copper ingots. It's like I have a, uh, a Mark One because it only outputs 60. Because what this does is, uh, is it's a, what is it, 100 per minute. And then here's plus 60. And then this splits it twice. Uh, then, then this is like another 60 belt, splits it twice so that this is uh, 30. Wait a second. <laughs> uh, 60... Or is it supposed to be 20? Uh-oh. I think I gotta go redo some of the math. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I did this all pretty hastily, needless to say, with how huge the entire factory is and everything. So, maybe I kind of screwed up some of the math somewhere. Yeah, that would be, uh, that would be 790. Which is, it's close enough, but still. It's like, I should be, I should be doing it better than that. Anyway, uh, the other thing, of course, is that, uh, is that I do... Oh, wait, no, no, the, yeah, right, that's the remainder of the stuff, isn't it? Where it's like I have, I have, like, the, the... It's, because it's 100, it's not, uh, you know, 120. Right, right, no, I did do that correctly. <laughs> ah! Oh, man, I, so, so many, so many things to keep track of. Anyway, along with color-coding the, the actual train platforms, I now have the top floor color-coded, so it's much, much easier when I'm working on the first and second floor 
to to figure out where each one of the supplies is supposed to be because I'm just like, okay, statters are on red row one. <laughs> that sort of stuff. And it also makes the entire factory look incredibly gaudy. Just incredibly gaudy. <laughs> just just terrible. But yeah, yeah, it's like it, it's it's an output of 100. 60 is going over to the left. The overflow is going into the middle and being split into 20 and 20. There you go. No, I did I did it right. I did it right. I'm using a programmable splitter to get the overflow. Or at least, I don't think I'm actually using a programmable splitter, but I gotta go replace that at some point in time. So no, I did do that correctly. Oh my god. I, I, once again, you can tell that I am really not an engineer or, like, good at math or anything. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so I just need some simple energy to start out with here to get the factory up and running. And, uh, again. And then, I, I'm thinking, yeah, nuclear energy, one. And two... Probably, I uh, re rework a lot of the resources so that they are actually should have some of these marked off already. In fact, I believe I do on like, yeah, like right here. Okay, pure too, which I think uh, it says it generates like a uh, seven hundred or something, six hundred, seven hundred. These are like fairly near. Oh, this one's actually very near. Oh yeah, right. I know about that one near the sulfur deposit. Okay, well, the other thing I can do, of course, is... Yeah, okay. The other thing I can do, of course, is go and set up some, like, train stations or something and just go hook that in for for energy. Speaking of which, can I do that right now? A train station? I can. Although it does require heavy modular frames, and I do need some of those for the, the geyser energy in the first place. Uh, heavy modular frames. It's like, I, 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 one of the things that's... Actually, wait, let me go get my exploring kit out here. Uh, one of the things that has been coming up quite a bit is that, well, nu uh, not nuclear energy, um, heavy modular frame, I need to go create more steel, is what I was going to say. Because, <laughs> like, I need, I need steel, I need a lot of steel, and the stuff I have right now just ain't cutting it. I also need a lot of motors, but that shouldn't be relevant as of right now. Alright, yeah, we're good, we're good. No, let me tell you, that assembly director unit, the, uh, the, the first thing on here, the, this thing is like 90% of the factory because the adaptive control unit is so ridiculous. And so is the supercomputer. Everything's ridiculous on this thing. It requires a lot to create. The second thing, the, um, uh, magnetic field generator, that's what it's called. Actually fairly simple. It's just a versatile framework is the most complicated of these, but otherwise, yeah, uh, it only requires, what, four supplies at the beginning, which is copper to create wire, uh, the steel pipes, and then uh, the AI limiter requires quick wire and copper sheets. It's just like, that's actually pretty easy to make. And batteries I'm already going to be making for other stuff. Now shipping bauxite into the main base. So I, I now have a way that I can go and create aluminum there, too, if I so feel like it. But hey, that also does uh, provide me with a little bit of silica if I want to pare down some of my operations. Of which, uh, speaking of some of the operations that I'm doing, I am creating like, uh, oh, let's say 45 automated wiring <laughs> for the for this stupid assembly director thing. 45 units out there. It is, it is actually really going on. I, I've hit the side of the screen. If I walked any farther, I would actually start taking rapid damage until I died. <laughs> I'm also built out over the infinite void. If I fall, if I fall off of the factory, I, uh, I I fall out of the world. I do not think the developers planned for you to be building a factory off the edge of the world like this. Ah well, I did it. You can't. You, they didn't stop me. I gave them all the chances to stop me. Ah, let's just take the homing ammo, I suppose, and then the boombox because <laughs> why not? I did get another, I got another tape. I got another tape actually on stream uh, right here. I did not realize there was Deep Rock Galactic uh, tape in this game or a reference to that game at all. I guess I can go do that later. So yeah, Deep Rock Galactic, uh, who knew? And I had no idea that that was going to, that that was in the game. I hear that it's sort of a, a similar type of, it's sort of a similar type of, um, game to this one so 
Yeah, throw it in. I mean, I think it's a little bit more about mining, but do whatever. Let's just let's just get on with it here. So, number one thing, I'm gonna go over to the I'm gonna go over to the the sulfur area. Set that one up. Okay, right next to Sulfropolis over here. Should you can see the weird uh, ambulatory whales just still clipping through everything. Some good stuff. And actually, you know, I, I need more sulfur right now. So you are also going to be overclocked even more. 150 per minute is not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that might be an issue coming up here. Well, anyway, it might be. We'll see if it is. Either way, for right now, though, a geothermal generator. How does, how does this thing work? I mean, it doesn't seem like it needs... Oh, it's actually much larger than I expected it to be. Huh. Okay. How you doing? Yeah, no overclocking on this one. It varies, but, I mean, energy is what I need. <laughs> like so. Hopefully it's not too long here to... Nope, it is too long. Okay. Well... Build one of these over here, then build one here. All right, there we go. Not bad. I mean, that's uh, yeah, no overclocking, variable amount. Yeah, of course. You know, just curious. Since I'm not working at peak efficient. Nope, it is still certainly not enough. <laughs> yeah, let me just see here real quick. It says uh, pure is 200 to 600, 400 on the average. That's pretty good. That's a good amount. That's like an entire fuel generator just by itself. So, you know, there's definitely some stuff there. All right. Yeah, there's like one over here. I know that. Got this one claimed. Now, is it just one or is there two? That's a pure one. That's an impure one, which is less important. I know there's one here. And I think there's like one over here. Hopefully, there's going to be enough to... All right, well, I guess I'm going to go up to this one then. Should be able to, uh, if with some trouble, hook it up to the the grid. Just uh, through the, the quartz stuff or maybe through the, the coal stuff or something. It's fairly close to that area, all things considered. So, I mean, I've already seen this area. This is where I was kind of running running from uh during the previous episode so let me just get right out yeah no it's just right here at least these things are fairly close to places where i've built the base i don't know if you've actually seen like this area there's a lot of um it's a lot of like uh gigantic plates almost on top of huge pillars Something that this game does uh, fairly often, of course. Like uh, I mean, you saw with the okay, there we are. Uh, you saw with the uh, the the impure nuclear node last time, for example, that uh, just for some reason, or like the bauxite even, where it's like, how is this a mineable thing? This is, this is literally a gigantic pillar of, of uranium over here, because that is absurd. All right. So, uh, no, I'm, what is the button I'm trying to press? All right. You are a pure node. Cool and nice. Yeah, getting good, getting good. So, let's go, I mean, I guess... It's like it's just right over here across the water. I can go. I can go and set up like one of the, uh, one of the the struts. One of the like um. Uh, can't remember the name of it. Uh, uh, monorail struts that I have already created because you can see it just right here. So, this is uh, ugly. This is ugly and bad, and I don't like, you know, just putting a huge. I don't like putting a huge uh, amount of power lines, but at the same time, this is realistic. Like, power lines do go big distances like this, even in the real world. 
A point that it's like I don't even notice them on the side of the road and everything. Eh, whatever. Me justifying being really lazy here. Let's go get a drone port up there. Just uh, with this sort of nonsense. Alright. Is that enough? That should be like 800 on average, right? Uh, no. <laughs> no, still no. Not good enough. Not good enough. Uh, alright. Where's... Some other fairly close ones around here, too. It's just free energy, so, you know, uh, the geothermal. Requires some stuff to make, of course. Okay. Got two here. Got purity normal and purity pure. Right next to the Katerium train. Okay, okay. Yeah, gonna, uh, they can go make that one work. So I guess I'm just going to go jump over there. That's just right outside of base, the uh, the Katerium thing. Should be right hereabouts. And ah, uh, yes, I think I've noticed this before. It's like a real... It's just like got geysers in this specific little area here. Not quite sure. I've seen these sort of pools before. They're like boiling hot water because the geysers under there. But anyway, so this, I guess, is the place where I'm going to put the last two geothermal generators I can make. Only because I'm missing some of the... Uh, uh, only because I'm missing some of the uh, the heavy whatevers, uh, heavy modular frames. As soon as I get those back on being created all the time, it should be should be a lot easier to make as many of these things as I need. Man, this is big. And now I'm out of like heavy modular frames and stuff. Okay, so one of these is pure, yeah. One of them is only normal, but you know, I don't think that's gonna be too big of a deal. Nice little area here, nice little area. And I'm just gonna go similar to what I did previously, get that over to the Katerium station. Which, if I can bring up my map. <laughs> uh, if I can bring up my map. There we go. I guess I didn't want to do that while I had the... Oh, there's a tiny iron... Yeah, there's a Katerium. There's also the place where the, the strange alien metal was. Of which, I guess, I kind of, you know, have that on lock now that it's right next to the base. Okay. Go bring it through the, the cave system here? Sure. For no particular reason, just because I can. We got anything else? We, uh, yeah, I can't have the power line on. Um, No, these are all the ones right next to the base. If this isn't good enough to get, get stuff going, I might have to start uh, shutting off some machines. Which is not ideal. There's that. Again, if I want to uh, hook that up to... You know, the uh, cats. Uh, if I want to go hook that up to the um, to the grid, you know, get the miner on there and everything. Uh, where was the Katerium stuff, actually? It's right over there. Okay. Because I'm, I'm, I'm already forgetting. Let's just go set up the stuff up here. So then what I can do is I can justify that as like, uh, the creatures aren't going to be attacking that if it's, if it's um, you know, up on top of a, a high place. Yeah, you can see it right there. Okay. <laughs> this is... I hate doing this, but, you know, I've already made a lot of concessions in this game as it is. All right. Is that enough? No. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Well, I guess the answer is that I'm gonna... Oh, I'm gonna uh, shut down some of the fact parts of the factory. I guess is I think the only way to do this. Okay, I need some quick wire if I'm gonna go do that, but that's fine. I can do it at right now, especially. Oh no, the auto save, the auto save when I got a factory this huge. It's getting real aggressive right now. Yeah, just, just hold still. And my progress has been saved. Okay, great. Oh. Still, though. Yeah, one of the things with the factory is, uh, you might have noticed that the way that I was actually coloring stuff was, like, all over the place there. Well, I started out with the idea that I was going to be... 
that I was going to be um, uh, trying to like make them colors that made some sort of sense. Like I have the, the iron and copper and blah, blah, blah stations. And then I'm just like, no, I'm just going to do it like red, blue, green, yellow, and then make them two areas because, you know, it's pretty easy to figure out where four lanes are. Any more than that, though, might be a little bit difficult. Oh, you know, while I'm here, I also do have uh, also still some more stuff I can do. Advanced Master. aluminum production. The object scanner can now find yes, I have actually in my um, my attempt to go and create a monorail over to actually the one node of uranium that I hadn't found before. I did find a yeah, right up here near the near another one of the Katerium stations. Actually, this one. I didn't know what to make it. I guess maybe I should just went with this instead. I didn't mean to exit out that. That's a nitrogen. That's a nitrogen well. I just found that one on my own. I didn't need to scan for it or anything. Uh, okay, remove that stamp. Remove that stamp. Yeah, this one. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look. Nitrogen gas water. Crude oil. Does that also include like crude oil wells? Got like any more? Any more that I might be able to find? Although I should also be looking for. Let's just look for nitrogen real quick. Uh, yeah. Evidently not anywhere around here. Well, I already know where one is. Okay, uh, wait. It's a little bit different. Oh, what? Whoa! What? Right next to... Wow, okay. Cool and nice. That is surprising to... Oh, wow! How convenient, actually. And yeah, that, that was the other one that I knew about. One right on top of the other thing. Wow, that is that is so incredibly convenient because I'm sure that the uh wait, where's the other one? Yeah, way out there. It's all pure though, baby. Hmm. Like most of these seem seem most of these things seem to be pretty pure. Uh, I do want to see like uh, uh, we got a new frame. I got the fused frame. That's really not that bad to make, to be honest. Can we extract a massage too? Yeah, I called this mattress or something. That is that is not nearly as bad as I was thinking it was going to be. Because I already have way more aluminum than I need. So that's okay. All right. Uh, also, not bad. Like, this one's a little bit more annoying. But it's overall, like, not the worst. <laughs> like, this could be, this could be way worse, especially given that I'm already making the, the heavy modular frame as it is. It's like getting the nitrogen gas, which is evidently very close to base, is not even a bad thing. Okay, that is, that's good. This is good. This is, this is pretty, this is already pretty good. Now, the only thing is, uh, what, what do I need? There's one more production station, the resource well. Oh, okay, it's just stuff. Stuff I already have. Overclocking it will increase the output of every one of the nodes. Right next to base. That is so. That is the one thing. Like I didn't know where. I didn't know where that was gonna be. So, it could have been like anywhere. And having to like ship it in from the fluid cistern wouldn't have been great. I mean, it would have been fine. And I'm using this for like power production here. Uh, well, I already overclocked the sulfur units, so hopefully they're gonna be doing some more. This I'm not even using. This was originally used to create a bunch of quick wire, but then, you know, I I moved quick wire production down to the first floor instead, with a bunch of overclocked units because otherwise I'd have to have, have to make like 40 assemblers, which is so very many assemblers. Consumption is not 21,000 yet. When I get everything like up and working, it probably will be. Uh, grr, let me see, let me see, some of you gotta have like a, yeah, here we go. A little bit of quick wire in my life, 
and then I am looking for... I mean, it's in the power, right? Yeah. All right, y'all. Um, how I... Okay, let's say, like... Let's say, like, right here. The power switch. So then the bottom floor of the factory just ain't gonna be doing anything. Because, like, I think that this is sort of what I need to do right now. So. There we go. That should... It appears to be connected somewhere else. I guess that shouldn't really surprise me, but I thought I had it done in a way where it was not. Well, oh, concentrating some of the energy, of course, to singular areas is perhaps something of a problem. Now then, the real place, of course, that everything is being, that everything is being uh, uh, used from, is the monorail. So this is going to shut down the entirety of the home base, of course. But it should keep the monorail system up and running and everything. Which is maybe the important part. Uh, of course, it's like, do I want to do it like that? Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> this seems kind of questionable. Maybe I'll just have to go figure this out a little bit better later. All right, yo. Maybe I need to actually try and... Right, not that one. The other one. Ugh. I thought I... Oh, man, I thought I um, spaced things out enough that I would be able to do this sort of thing, but I guess not. All right, all right. So let's go see that nitrogen well, I suppose, while I'm doing this right now. I'll figure this out later. After all, like I said, I do have to go make a lot more efficient um, efficient uh, delivery of resources. Sort of a, a bottleneck that's coming up right now. It's like I just don't have enough copper ore, for example coming in at least per minute. Where is your thing? Oh, no. Okay, it's, it's right there. Huh. That is, like I said, wow, how did I not find this at any point in time? You really think I... It's like, did I just, like, not go over this hill? Because, like, there's the factory. All I need to do, really, is just... Yeah, stop that. Uh, all I really need to do is just, like, yeah, just bring it over here. And there's, like, there's like floor two and floor three right here. Right here. Right here, right now. Remember, just go make, like, a... Yeah, it's this is so incredibly close, and I never found it. Huh. Like, not even a bad place for a base to be at, eh? <laughs> I mean, sure, it has issues... For example, me um, b building off the edge of the world. But I mean, you know. Yeah, I guess I just never was over here. I'm not really overclocking anything aggressively enough that I am looking for every single slug I can find. So stuff like this appearing is no surprise. Still though. Huh. Well, how about that then? So yeah, it said that it's just like, yeah, you got like nitrogen gas pure, nitrogen gas pure. Nitrogen gas pure. Nitrogen gas, just right here. <laughs> it's gonna be nice and easy to be even uh, do, do, just get this right back over to the base. I'll just probably go run a, run a pipeline over there, which again, I know I really, I, I, I'm trying to like avoid doing that, but uh, it's fine. I don't really think it matters as to which one I end up 
doing. This one, on the other hand, places on an activated fracking satellite node. What a weird way to say that. But like, yeah, this, this is gonna work out just fine. And then fused modular frames, baby! They're all over the place. I'm gonna have a fully functional sort of uh, cube factory at this rate. But yeah, it's like you can even just see it right here. It's just it's right here. Huh, how about that? Strange alien metal and uh, strange alien metal and nitrogen. All right, all right. So uh, what am I doing now? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out some sort of way to actually turn my factory back on. <laughs> sort of, sort of number one priority. And then uh, I, I I don't know. Get get some of them fused frames. I mean, you can see what it looks like when I actually create a a line of of machines and everything. It's incredibly boring, of course. Look at all that water going in here. <laughs> But yeah, uh, let's go see real quick before I, before I totally yeah, do a big cut. Um, instead, just go up here. Maybe go grab all the resources to put into like the phase, whatever. Because I mean, I do. Yeah, you see, you can see I got a little bit lazy right at the end here, but that's eh, you know. I wanted to get it on already. I wanted to start making these things. You know, like just it's got like the magnetic field generator it's got the other thing and then I don't I wonder how much of these objects are going to end up being used for uh, future stuff like am I gonna need all of the things that I am I gonna need everything that I am creating right now for uh, the two other objects the nuclear pasta and like fusion engine I don't know the nuclear pasta is clearly the uh, the current final boss of the game <laughs> as it were so you know that is there's gonna be something to uh, struggle with when the time comes but yeah I think I'm gonna have to start doing nuclear energy if I have like 21,000 Morrowinds that I need to make even though that shouldn't all be used but if I actually have the factory working to good efficiency and especially if I make some more drones I'm definitely gonna get close to that, if not quite at that point. I uh, will see. The other stuff is automated, so although I'm gonna have to wait, what, 10 hours or something to get everything? Played this game for 244 hours. I like it. I like the game. Well, there's sort of a question of, like, do I like this game as much as I just like doing this whole, like, math stuff and everything? I don't know. Hard to say sometimes. Here we are. One tenth of the way there. <laughs> okay, well. Don't worry, there's more to come. I changed up the wires back at the factory to be able to get that all offline while keeping fuel production and the monorail system still online until I'm able to get nuclear power working. Which is why I am in the southernmost part of the map, going off a monorail line that I built from the, the Katerium 1 station. This should not only lead to, to uranium, but also to everything I need to be able to create uh, the the uranium power cells, just all in this single area alone. So by going up here, for example, I will be able to, uh, well, you can see an easy way to make concrete, which is gonna be required for that. But uh, up on top of this, there is also a very small mining operation Getting, uh, getting sulfur out of the ground. I was able to find that pretty easily, which is a nice, convenient uh, way to get all the supplies that I need. Not for the uranium rods. I mean, there are other things like the the uh, other nodes like copper and iron and stuff around here, but it is enough to create uh, here uranium. Yeah, the encased uranium cells. Here we go. Now, the only thing I'm missing here is is water, which is part of the whole sulfuric acid thing. Yeah, this requires some more stuff. But I think that in all likelihood, the nuclear pasta is probably going to require cells rather than fuel rods anyway. So I think I'm probably going to want to get that stuff back to base regardless. 
But uh, yeah, it should be not too difficult to have everything I need all in one place here. The only issue, of course, is that uh, is that I am going to be going quite some distance around here. I mean, even even water, actually. You can see that there's uh, one of those, those like a small sort of nitrogen gas uh, fracking nodes, as they were called there. There's just a bunch of ways to get concrete. So I'm thinking that uh, it's it's going to be another, you know, satellite. Satisfactory, everybody. It's going to be another satellite base here. There we go. <laughs> just got to give it a second to load in. Uh, there's going to be another uh, small base here to, to get this working. And then I should be able to just uh, mostly end up shipping the product over to, to the main base. And I'm hoping that this is not going to require more than just like... To, oh, God. Ah! I guess since, uh, since I set up the actual miner over there, it's gotten a lot more radioactive. So I can't even leave my um, lead lined train right now <laughs> okay yeah that's uh i guess i guess the concentrating things that much oh and if i start bringing like cells everywhere yeah that might be a problem i also totally forgot to bring my my uh the iodine fil filters so i am very much not immune to that sort of uh, problem right now. All right, all right. So I, I, I got, I, as you've seen, uh, there's like everything has a station right next to it except for concrete. But I think that uh, and concrete is, you know what, here, let's just go make that right now because I'm literally right here. Slow down, slow down. This gets automatically done. It's going to be a lot more convenient. All right, uh, real quick. Just need a train station. Oh, yeah, and since I got it on the power grid now, I also have, on top of everything else, a very nice and simple way to... A very nice and simple way to uh, uh, d d float around here without using a bunch of jetpack fuel. Porto Stipper. All right, all right, fine. Well, you know what I can do is I can just uh, do it like this, after all. Get a little bit closer to the monorail, though. Very, very short distance, like I said. I mean, it might be worthwhile to not even, not even bother with creating a bunch of individual stations, given that they have to be loaded up and everything. In fact, you know what? I'm not even going to create this. I'm going to just, I am going to just create a small, and it's probably going to be very short, ultimately, a little way to get the, 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 the conveyor belt system so that I can keep the train moving for as much as I, I can around here. There are so many lime... Limestone is barely used for anything. It's used for the encased beams. It's used for regular concrete. Or it's used for... For, uh... The, yeah, encased beams, regular concrete, and now, uh, the uranium. And that's it. And it's all over the place, and it's very easy to get. It is It is one of the, the least important resources that... You know, I'm going to end up using. But yeah, right here, right here. This, I think, is probably where I want to get the base. Or maybe split the difference between that and limestone. Something like that. So, let's start out here. No, I will actually need... Yeah, maybe... Okay, okay. Split the difference, I think, is probably a good idea. Let me... Let me, though, start with production. Give me a resource well pressurizer. Doing this for water seems kind of pointless, especially given that I think water is just right down there as well. Ah, whatever. Multiple nodes like this. It seems like it's going to be a lot more convenient than creating, you know, anything else. Also, just real quick. Do I have... I, I still have a, a, a... From being down here, I did find a bunch more of those... Did find a bunch more of those... Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, hard drives, so... I don't really want any of these. One, charcoal is something I already have. I don't even know why it's bothering giving me this. This is... Nah. It's just like, hey, do you not want to make compacted coal? It's... There's reasons why you'd make this, of course, but... I don't know. Insulated cable. I already have so many ways to be making cables right now. 
and I specifically I'm actually bussing in uh, I'm bussing in some some yeah the, the, the heavy oil residue to make those at this point in time because otherwise I'd have to have like a hundred different uh, things creating this I guess give me that <laughs> wonder if I'm starting to come to the end of all the very useful sort of all the very useful sort of um, the, 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 like the good Go good stuff that I'm going to be getting out of that. Now I'm just getting kind of all the uh, the ones I've been skipping past over and over. Okay. It, it has to be active. Okay, so that's fine. It is a lot smaller. I mean, I guess it's a, a lot less power usage and everything compared to using one of the... Yeah, what if I just had it... Oh, look, there's even um, some copper ore right over here, too. I guess that's kind of useful. I brought my, like, adventuring kit or something. Uh, alright. Alright, alright. That's nice. That's handy. I Am I gonna use it? I don't know. There's also... I got a feeling that this might be also a... Like, this is the first starting area or something, which is why everything is sort of laid out as if you want to create a base here. <laughs> Just a feeling. Okay, well, I thought there was water over here, and maybe there is way far down, but certainly not here. All right, well, uh, how are we going to do this? I still think that I want to try to have less... I want to try to have less, uh, less stops, like as few stops as I need to, and if that requires creating a couple lines of conveyor belts, so be it. Uh, but then again, I don't know. I think it's, it's like creating like the lines of conveyor belts and everything is just so... Eh. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it and then I'm gonna go create it right next to the... The water well then instead. Resource well? I think they actually call them resource wells like that. Right? Oh, right, right. If I am gonna do that, I do need to actually create something of a... Do need to create something of a platform to put stuff on. For large, I believe, is what you mostly need to make that work. Which is why I only created three, of course. Why do you need any more than that? You need any more than three. And then I realized this is also at a really awkward, weird angle. Okay, well, let's actually pay attention to the way that I have this set up here first. Get a little bit of an aerial view. Since I do very much have that ability with the, with everything still being powered right now. Okay, so something like, uh, four, 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 sixteen. How about that? Surely. I mean, it's not perfect, but it'll do. It'll do. Yeah, it, it will, it will function. <laughs> That's the important thing, right? Uh, I guess, what am I going to call you? Uh, con bleh. Concrete one. I just, just, we're done with cutesy names. It's all functional names at this point in time. And nothing else. Okay. So, with concrete one, I still do think I'm going to need, yeah, like a little bit of actual production here as I'm doing this. This is the sort of stuff that I cut out, out of every single episode. Can you believe that? I mean, it's like, why why wouldn't you want to keep this sort of incredible action in all the time, right? One, two of these. Ah, whatever. This is probably going to be the last time that I'm doing any sort of major like a, a creation of stuff, so at least I can only hope. I guess I'm not really going to say one way or another. Who knows? I might have to expand the operation depending on how it, it goes into being way bigger or something at some point in time. All right. I'll just go back and forth from there. All right. That'll work. Now, back to this station. Uh, how am I, you know, I'm actually realizing right now, it's like, I, I have everything as the first station here. I'm going to want to put, I'm going to actually want to change that. Uh, whatever, we'll, we'll cha I'll change that up a little bit later, where it's just like concrete's going to be number three, uh, sulfur's going to be number two, 
the actual the actual uranium cells themselves are going to be number four. And I will know when the train's coming into base at all points in time because it will be it will suddenly turn extraordinarily radioactive. Okay, so oh, there's a slug up there, which I might end up using. I mean, you know, for just for the sake of of getting I don't know the just for the sake of getting the the uh, more overclocking materials. I'm actually starting to use that. And I mean, even right now, I might want to try to overclock. All right, let's see. Let's do it like this. Yeah, I like that. This will be the train platform. But then off of the train platform, I'm going to be creating a little mini factory. And that's the plan right now. But, uh, yeah, start overclocking, like, some of the resources that I have. I think I even already have the uranium being overclocked purely for the sake of purely for the sake of you know that's the only node that i have of that and i don't really know exactly how much i'm going to be using and frankly these this train being full most of the time is okay like i'm gonna have it be kind of far away from base in the way that i end up in the way that i end up um having delivering inside the Okay, good. I'm glad to see that I totally screwed that up. I'm going to have this far away from base for radioactive stuff. It'll be like on that beach where I had the original original oil or uh, coal production set up. Something like that. Alright. And so in the background there, I'll just have it... I'll have all the stuff. Probably not too many machines if I want to take any guess. Please latch on to this. Ah. <laughs> anyway, where I'll have all the machines set up for... Oh, I'm missing some modular frames. I see, I see, I see. Well, that's not that big of a deal. All right, all right. Well, yeah, actually, it's kind of a big deal. You know, I lied. It's sort of a big deal. Uh, maybe I can start creating some of that right now because I do sort of need... A, a few of that at this point in time. Heavy modular frame. What do I require? Some modular frames and scrolls. Well, at least I can create those for right now. It's not ideal. <laughs> it's not really how I want to do this at all. But that's okay. Ugh, I shouldn't need too many more modular frames or anything past this point is what I'm thinking. Please, please tell me that that's, that that's correct, because, oh boy, oh boy, would really like to not have to, to mess around with that anymore. Well, at least with even just the station. With even just the station created, I'll be able to, ah, I'll be able to have a power supply going to this, and then I'll be able to start... I mean, okay, let's let's take a look here, just real quick. Uranium. I mean, create cased uranium cells. That's what I'm going to end up making. I'm going to need a refinery. I'm going to need at least one refinery. Uh, Ten of these, which is 50 per minute. Yeah, I'm currently mining that up at like 240. So I guess I'm probably going to end up creating about 100 encased uranium cells a minute. And this requires... Okay, so... With the encased industrial beams and f electromagnetic rods, I should be able to create like five, or, well, not five, uh, should be able to create like, yeah, like, uh, 125 of this per minute, create like, yeah, three of these, I guess I'm gunning for about three uranium fuel rods a minute back at base. And that'll be about 7,500 or so wattage. And that will probably be enough to get me... I mean, it, it, and that's if, if, you know, I don't... And then that's, you know, uh, until I end up getting, like, the Minor Mark three or overclocking it even more, or et cetera, and so on that I should be able to turn back on the power supply there. I think at this point in time with all of the with all of the uh really uh, terrible terrible 
work that I've done to, to create many different power sources that are, I don't know, questionably effective, sort of effective, mostly effective, uh, that it's like, it should be enough. It should be enough to get the, let's just go reset up everything here. Oh, good. Let me see what the, maybe this is going to be something else uh, convenient to get. Not really. Cheap silica is kind of funny. OC supercomputer. Cars three cooling systems, three eight radio units, which I guess, yeah, doesn't even require a regular computer. Uh huh. Well, I still don't really care too much. Yeah, I mean, I, I swear I've even seen cheap silica before. I guess that does cut down on the amount of how much does it make? Twenty six point five per minute. I'm probably not going to be making this, considering that I already have everything working. So I guess give me the cheap silica. Maybe I'll maybe I'll make some use out of that. But yeah, I'm fairly certain I've seen all of those already. So it is it is getting to the point that I think I have most of the the recipes, that, most of the alternate recipes that you can get in the game. I don't think I'm going to be seeing that much of anything else for other. I don't know. Um, Oh, here, just real quick. There, I do have a an alternate recipe for the uranium fuel rod. Requires 20 per minute, requires 20 per minute, but then produces even more? I don't know if that's really worth it. Seems sort of questionable. But yeah, it's like... So pretty much I think what I'm looking at for this little miniature factory, it's going to be like five refineries. Uh, mm, although maybe even less because I do also get some of that back. I'll be up to like 1600 or so. Hopefully that'll be enough to get the factory working so that I can start on making things more efficient. Uranium production should be all ready to go. So uh, let me just add this timetable to start out at this sulfur, uranium, or what is it? How did I have the setup? It is sulfur to concrete to uranium and then the refinery okay and one thing i realized doing this is that i really need a lot more just a lot more of the of the the heavy modular frames i'm just just running out of those constantly in fact i don't even have the fourth cart on here which is uh thanks autosave right as i start this up again right i uh, i don't even have the I don't even have the fourth cart on here which is supposed to actually take the uranium power cells so that's sort of annoying Oh yeah, I want to just make sure that this actually uh, functions well. And you know what? This is a uranium train, right? Even though uranium, by the way, not green. It is a silver color. It is a silvery color like, you know, any other metal. <laughs> so this is uh, entirely... It, it's, it's that radium dye thing where, like, radium watches, radioactive. They would, they would uh, have... They would have... Uh, uh, they, they would have some sort of paint that would react with that and then glow a bright green. Okay. Before people realize that you probably don't want to have anything radioactive directly on your wrist. And now these days, we don't even have wristwatches. It's all about phones. I am so glad that, that cell phones started becoming a thing just as... Just as I would probably have started to have to wear a watch. Now I never need to do so. And you can see a good uh, look at the basic refinery. It's a lot of refineries. It's actually only four. I, I estimated that I could make eight, but I have, uh, I have, or yeah, eight, eight not eight, I mean uh, 12, but I have, um, I have four of them being overclocked. So that should work out well. Here again, since I'm waiting for things to load up, yeah, I was I was considering at one point in time just uh, I was considering one point in time just um, having it maybe as I deliver the power cells instead pick up a bunch of concrete there, but uh, it's I don't know. I've I've already set this up, so it's it's good. Not actually even making enough concrete right now because it's only a normal node, but I think that you know I should be able to pretty quickly get. The, the Mark III minor unit, and that will cover that just fine. It's a good-looking train. <laughs> it's not. But anyway. All right. 
And thankfully the train is apparently lead lined, so I do not I do not need to worry about dying here. <laughs> Although this time I do in fact have the I do in fact have the, the iodine stuff. So maybe I'll hop out for one second to see how fast those filters start to go down and then just hop right back in because oh my god. Oh yeah, look at it right there. It's beautiful. Yep, that is that is a lot of uh, uranium. This time I'm not dying, so it's fine. All right. Well, so good so far, right? Just the way I'm looking at it, as it were. As long as uh, once I get back to the actual refinery, it starts refining. And it should be good. Then this can kind of keep going in a circle while I am... Um... I see a cat over there. <laughs> But, um, yeah, and this, this is going to kind of keep going in a circle, getting a bunch of uranium cells made, and then I'll eventually take it back to some sort of station that I'm making over at the base instead. Gotta go get that colored then, too. I don't, but, I mean, I'll do it. <laughs> the extremely radioactive train. I mean, you know, I, I, I was thinking, like, when I first found ra uh, uranium that... I would have been able to, uh, I don't know, uh, just put it in my pockets and then it would no longer be radioactive. But th thankfully, it, it I, that sort of video game logic does in fact work here to a certain extent. A certain extent. All right, hopping out here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The second that I hop out, it's like extremely radioactive. This entire area is going to be unlivable, which... I expect, I expected that, <laughs> but, well, it's still true. Okay, so, all this creating sulfuric acid, which is good. Yeah, you know what, start, start up the sulfuric acid uh, train right now. Got 65, it does not seem to be going down super fast for my, for my filters, so I guess that's good. Here's where everything comes out. There's the water supply coming from... Uh, the node, which I obviously didn't put as much work into. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, in case uranium cells, four of them are overclocked, four of them are normal. Set that out to... <laughs> yeah, I had to... Uh, yeah, it's like to, to actually get the stuff, you know, working. I couldn't just send it from that end right in there. It has to go around in a circle, but I think it gives it a, a cool cool style to it right all right and sulfuric and okay so the uranium's going the concrete's going sulfuric acid is yeah it's going i think this will work it's just yeah it's just a very unfriendly area all things considered by the way in the blender the the inside change is based on whatever the actual recipe is you're using. So it's like gray if you're doing this. It's purple if you're doing the diluted fuel. Very subtle change there. But, uh, you know, for the most part, it's... Um, it's gonna be green, I guess, over here. <laughs> I keep continuously running out of... So I keep pretty much constantly running out of... Uh, case uranium frames it is a little bit more compact than usual and I guess that's okay it's only a little radioactive even getting right next to the uh, the green slurry it's not too bad ah looks like I might have no 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 uranium's still going in there I was thinking I might have missed uh, one of the connections there but no it looks good yeah, and once again, I do not have enough concrete actually being created right now. So that is something of a problem, but is okay. Yeah, three of these things have the, the Ouroboro sulfuric acid going back in there because, you know, uh, the, the creating, yeah, 80, 8, 80 times 4, and then 40 times 4 should be enough to suffice for three of them. Wait a second. It should be suffice for, sufficing for four of them. Wait a second. No, right. It, it only takes ten. It, it only makes ten each. 
yeah, these these require eighty, and they make t and they make twenty. Those it, it, I don't know why I always keep. Uh, I don't know why this is the episode where I second guess my math all the time. But well, there we are. Show me some of those uranium uh, things. Oh yeah, baby, there they are, encased cells. How big? How big do they actually? How much do they actually stack up? And how far away do I need to get before it's no longer radioactive? Wow, kind of far away. Can I can I do it while I'm also looking at the amount in there? Just like get right on the edge? <laughs> no. No, apparently the radius here is exactly enough for me to continuously take radiation damage. All right, I got 200 in total. Just up my radiation damage just 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 to the extreme. Just to the extreme. By the way, how you doing, train? You looking fantastic. I think. Yeah, no, I, I think I think it's good. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it's like one way sort of things. All right. Well, obviously my uh, my stuff is going to be very quickly going down right now. But what I am going to do is wait. No, no. I was just thinking. It's like, oh, I need to do it like this. And like, no, I don't. I can just do it like uh. Wait. Do I have the stuff here? Let me see real quick. Cause I, there is just one thing I want to get, and it's this. But no, I don't have 500 of these things. Okay, I'm just gonna. All right, all right. I'm clearly gonna be on a time limit. I'll just go get the train to bring this to me instead. Ah, whatever. I got 62. Never mind. I'm just gonna go. And then we're gonna go unlock nukes. Ah, please. I'm so extremely irradiated right now. I'll just unlock the last thing already. Can't afford. Oh, come on. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm still the radiation though. Oh, come on. Can I just make like one one of these things while I am still continuing to be irradiated? Uh, okay, okay. Yes, I only need one. Okay, cool. Great. Please. Ah. Get these things out of my pocket. And by these, I mean 10. Wow. Yeah, that's everything. And I, I mean, I don't really have time to go gawk at my um cool cool abilities. I'm already down like 20 of these running back here. Milk Nobilisk. Seriously. Oh my god. I hate you all so much. You, of course, being uh, the d d d developers, I guess. <laughs> Just get it out. Get it. Where are these? Go. Ah. Okay. Are we good? How radioactive are these? <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what? Here, maybe this is just like a, it was just like a glitch or something, and I'll be able to undo that right now. Okay, we good? We good? Yeah. All right. I don't know if that was a glitch. I don't know if it was the fact that I did carry that for like a straight five minutes or something, but um, yeah. Uh, now let me go see. How how far away does this actually need to be from the base before I get, like, super dead? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so it does appear to be that if these are in a... in a container in any way, that they are actually uh, pretty benign. They're just very radioactive if you have them on your person. Okay. Well, hey, with 200 of those alone, I can start to make uh, the uranium power cells, right? And I'm betting the encased uranium cells is probably what I'm going to eventually need for nuclear pasta. Because if you look up... Uh, first off, how many does this require? 20 per minute? Okay, I can go create like 10 of these. It's good. I can go start the, the actual... I'm gonna start like the process of creating those. Yeah, and like I said, it's just like it, it seems as well, here's a question though. And maybe I should go back and get my stuff. Here's a question though. I uh, if I were to have them on a conveyor belt, are they radioactive? Because that might still be the case. Still though, I'm in some ways impressed that the the fact that the little miniature factory that I made over there actually worked immediately. Like it didn't even Oh, yeah, right. You can't just... Well, you know what I can do is... No. No. Come on. Come on. Be cool already. Uh. Okay, fine. Well, here, how about this then instead? 
<laughs> right. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to go back and get my stuff. One second. Because if these things are not actually radioactive, even on the... <laughs> missing concrete, of all things. Uh, if these things are not actually radioactive, even on the, the conveyor belt, then what I can do is I can actually bring those into the factory, and it'll be fine. However, let's see. How you doing? Yeah? No? Oh, okay. It seems like if I'm touching them, then that is a different story. Fair enough. Fair enough. But as long as they're on a conveyor belt or something, I guess they're going so fast, or I don't know what the justification is for this sort of thing. All right. Back on the huge radiation. Uh, all right. All right. So I guess I'll actually just go create this stuff there. Maybe I'll even have, like, the nuclear power plant. As long as I don't have the... Yeah, is that good? Yeah, because it, if I, if you put it in a, a container, it's, like, totally fine. Okay, well, anyway, I was saying... Yeah, okay, so I guess I can have, like, even the, the nuclear power plant and everything in the factory. It's, like, as long as it's not just ambient, uh, ambient uranium, it's actually quite safe. Huh. How about that? Well, oh, so, I mean, since I, since all of the actual production of, of the cells are happening way away from here, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, and then I can just go bring them all back here. All right, but yeah, I was also saying that uh, uranium, uranium. It says for the description of uranium that it's only used to create encased uranium cells for uranium fuel rods, which says to me maybe I'm not going to need just plain uranium for nuclear pasta, but I don't know. That's the one thing that it seems like you use it for. It's either that or power generation, and that's it. Well, I guess I'll see. In the meantime, though, uh, what I'm probably going to do is go and actually set up some of that stuff. I mean, it should be as simple as, you know, just getting over here. Uh, what, manufacturers? I need manufacturers. I'd also like to create some more train platforms, but I know right now for a fact that I do not have enough heavy modular frames. Can I, uh, can I create, um, oh, let's say, like... Four, ten? No, it's because I'm holding down shift. Uh, can I create... How many of these can I create for right now? Because I would like to do a little showcase of, hey, what does it actually require heavy modular frames? Well, I just I can't get away from these things, can I? Concrete. Well, there you go, because this is from a previous thing that I had set up there. And some more plastic. Okay, okay. I'm going to go get the supplies here, and then uh, I'll show what it looks like when I actually set up like a line of machines for... For once. Since I have everything automated, it's as easy as just grabbing all the supplies I need from my various machines. So, yep, I'm gonna make 40 of these and then go and set up those manufacturers. So what do I actually do when I am creating a new row of stuff? Well, first off, I gotta figure out where I have space and... Like I was saying, I mean, here, if I try to go all the way off the edge anymore, I've already built the fa factory into parts unknown and... Not just parts unknown, but also parts where I take constant damage if I'm over there. So that's kind of out. Not really possible when, when I, if I try to do any sort of work on those machines, I'll die. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I probably won't die, but I don't really want to burn through a bunch of uh, my healing resources just purely because I wanted to try and build out a little bit more here. And it's like, I can go all the way up to here, and then... Yeah. <laughs> it's it's sort of silly. I might as well put up a wall there or something, but uh, it's fine. It's it's totally fine. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. And just real quick, um, is it... Where do I got my ladders here? Because without power on, I uh, kind of don't really have too much ability to get up to the upper floor easily so maybe i'll just keep this for right now but yeah the second floor it's got a lot of space going on here and i don't know if i necessarily want to build in front of the refineries although wait why why would i not want to build in front ah eh, whatever okay so I'll just go like 10 10 i think that because these require manufacturers to create the uranium power cells I am going to actually need to have a, a good amount of space. Like, I think four squares, probably good enough. Well, I got my basic manufacturer right here. All right, let's give it a good amount of space. Yeah, 
Got like about a square and a half. I was, you know, at one point in time thinking about, uh, thinking about, you know, trying to... Actually, uh, nah. Thinking about trying to standardize the the points in between here. And although that's still not a bad idea, what I should be doing is I should be spacing them out so that the the holes leading up to the ceiling aren't all directly next to one another, if you know what I'm saying here. All right. Have it in blueprint mode so that I can see everything, line it up nicely. Still screw up lining it up nicely, pretty much on the regular, but that's fine. It doesn't take much mouse movement to get these manufacturers to uh, get misaligned, or any one of the machines, really. But anyway, uh, all right. Press the middle mouse button, get a little bit more here. Given that you can see I already have uh, an entire line of manufacturers that I'm standing on literally right now. Sort of know how far I want to get it out, I suppose. All right. Now, no. Yes. Once again, control to have it snap to stuff I feel like never really works quite in the way I want it to. All right. Combine those together. Then go and get this over to, well, usually just like whatever, whatever the across the wall or across the hall sort of one is to connect it to the power grid. That way, if I need to disconnect it or something, I can do that very quickly. Now, real quick here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're not going for that one. Okay, I only actually need three things. So I guess I can get rid of this fourth one right here. This one's so close to the actual machine itself that it often does... That I, 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 until I actually implemented the blueprint properly, it was not actually feeding into the machine. And sometimes you can have stuff where it's like it's too short to actually get in there. So some of them are weirdly aligned in other places in the factory before I made the, the proper blueprint for it. But it, yeah, it's, it should be good now. All right, uranium fuel rod. And well, I only have four of these, and yeah, none of them are going to be going over 780. So. I think that all of these can be, in fact, I don't think any of these, the increased uranium cells are not going anywhere else right now, so I don't need to create, normally what I would have to do is I would have to create like overflow stuff at the end, you know, like it trickles down um, from all the way over here to the end here, and here's where I would want to go put in like the, the programmable splitters. Replace all these three with programmable splitters, have the, the inflow go in through here, and have overflow go out through here so that I can go and re recapture it, put it up on the top floor. Because as long as it's not going over 780, I'm just going to have a single line leading through there. If it goes over 780, then I'm going to actually tailor it specifically to what the various outputs are going to need from the actual creation point. Here, that shouldn't be relevant. So, right now, uh, I guess since you know, uranium cells, I'd, how, how am I going to do this here? I, I guess it's just going to be from the from another another one of the train platforms. So I'll br worry about that one later. I mean, I'll still have it go. Uh, it's first point in time. It says fourteen. Yeah, right there. So we'll do that. We'll do. Normally, the ceiling at any other point in the factory, this would be just scraping up against the ceiling. Not actually touching it, though. Do that. And then 14 here. Yeah. All right. And there. That is the basic setup for how I am going to get the inputs in here. And then, again, at any other point in the, in the factory, this would not be going across, you know, the clear blue sky. But, well... This is uh, sort of a new addition after I uh, started to fall out of the world, <laughs> so you know, sort of a sort of a thing. All right then. So first one is going to be the encased uranium cells. It's going to be coming from a frame trait. Second one is three encased industrial beams. Where do I? Let me go check my my sheet here. Encased industrial beams are. Uh, white colored foundation number two. First one is crystal oscillator and then it turns into red turning which is a statter. So it's from the second one here I just kind of take it. Wait what's the alignment 
directly on the left side of that foundation. Okay. Not that it really matters, but, you know, I'm trying to prevent spaghetti as much as possible. You can see white, uh, the white thing right there. And I said it was white too. Since I'm giving you everything two lanes, that's crystal oscillator. Whereas that should be where the, where encased industrial beams are coming out. Okay. Troll. And then the third one is, what is it? The magnetic rods, which, I mean, I'm already kind of messing about in a way that doesn't, yeah, electromagnetic control rods, which is, let me show you here. Electromagnetic control rods. Where are you? Oh, I'm just going to control F this. I don't have a thing for electromagnetic control rods. What? I don't. Wait, how did I not have a lane reserved for that? Uh, well, congratulations. Um, which one can I bump out here? Assembly director unit is just, he's not going to be used in anything else, presumably. So yellow four is now electro, no oh, magnetic, uh, control rods. All right. So yellow four, which is actually the last one that I have created, right? And it's called electromagnetic control rods just for my, just for my second. That's right. We got two different, uh, spreadsheets going on here now. Can you believe it? Can you believe that this game has gotten complicated enough that I have a, a spreadsheet for sorting things and a spreadsheet for... For, um, that's not yellow, by the way. <laughs> I also have a second one that's yellow because, you know, I wanted that to be like Caterium Gold. It's very confusing. Uh, but anyway, here's red. There's yellow. Okay. Yellow four, then. So right here, or more specifically right here, because they, again, two lanes. They all have two lanes. All right. Go and get the electromagnetic control rods. Ah, I didn't align it right. Again, it doesn't matter, but I kind of want to align it right. There we are. And there we go. There's that. And now I got to go get up to the top, top floor, which, of course, without the ability to fly is just a... Uh, whatever. I'm going to have the uranium train coming in here soon, eh? That's just going to be an entire thing by itself. But, uh... I mean, at least if the, if it's not radioactive or if it's just radioactive to a very small degree, that's okay. That is perfectly acceptable. I'm perfectly happy with that and everything. And, I mean, I hope that the assembly director unit is not going to be used in nuclear pasta. I can only hope. Why would it be, though? I mean, this, that, that it's like, okay, well, now that you've made 4,000 of these, repurpose them into another another thing, right? No, I want to go on third floor. Which, actually, yeah, monorail's up here, so I do actually have uh, flight now. Good. All right, let's just let's just go get the encased uh, uh, the encased thing set up, and you'll see. It's like this is this is as you can probably notice a much much better system. Like my God, it is so much better than than the previous one that I was using, which was just so. Uh, horrible, just just terrible. No, it looks like I might have to go take the overflow for encased beams, judging by this, and kind of like shuffle it back and forth. As far as I know, let me take a look here real quick at my other spreadsheet. How many industrial, uh, encased industrial beams am I actually creating right now? I am, I have 10 assemblers creating, well, 9.375 is what I actually require. But they are, but they are only creating stuff for, yeah, the heavy modular frame, of course, the, which I really like them to be doing right now. All right, but yeah, uh, and they create it at a rate of six per second. Okay, so there's a grand total of 60 going through here. In other words, what I can do is I can create a... Well, I mean, the overflow actually can just go from here instead. Yeah. The, uh, which is from the heavy modular frame. And then go over here. Uh, go get you out for... Uh, let's see, let's see. I guess probably have it be like this or so. So that's not completely and totally clipping into everything in a in a terrible way. Now aligned with three. Well, okay, it's still kind of clipping, but that's fine. I run it down here. Then I'm sure you can tell. So it's like as soon as I get the overflow, the overflow thing working. 
then we'll be looking good. And that will be flowing directly into the machine. Okay, so let's go get the overflow. Like I said, since it's not 780, I'm not going to specifically tailor it to anything. So that should work out. I hope I don't fall out of the world right now. I didn't. <laughs> good. All right, which one is... Which one is encased beams? Your encased beams. All right, so... From here, go and line that up. All right. Okay. Now, unfortunately, for right now, I don't have the ability to get a programmable splitter so that I can have the, the middle being overflow instead. But, uh, whatever. <laughs> it's like, there's so few industrial beams are going to be going through here that it will not make any difference if I am splitting the final one or not. That's uh, the way I look at it. I'm, I, I ran out of Alclad sheets. Really, have I been using that many at this point in time? Well, such is the way. All right, well, I should be able to at least, no, I can't. Well, it's gonna be clipping a little bit. I could, you know, readjust it so that this is like moved over just slightly so that it wouldn't be clipping so badly, but it'll just go back up in there. Yeah, and then I will have my, then I will have that uh, inputting in there correctly. Which, I mean, I guess you can watch me do that. <laughs> I, I think I could probably just cut it here until I, you know, actually get proper nuclear power set up and everything. But that's how the system works. It's, it's convenient. It works well. It uh, actually functions in a way that is, that is like, consistent and doesn't require me to overlap everything all the time, every single time I want to add or take away anything new. It's going to be a little bit tricky for things that are outputting more than 780 per minute, but that's, it's really still, uh, it's still very, very, you know, doable. And then I can just continuously add more manufacturers down here. Do have to kind of finish uh, getting all of these sort of set up and I'll probably make this like an exception for the entire factory being shut down which at the very beginning of the factory now just have like a big there we are now just have like a big uh, a big uh, switch there that I can just use to turn the factory on and off but yeah yeah you get it you you get the shtick here right so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just going to, yeah, finish up uh, wiring a little bit of the rest of this. Oh, yeah, with the, with the, these are still powered, so I can use the the flight here. Good, good. There's also one more, the thing that's actually creating the compacted coal, but eh, I'm already way past that. Yeah, there it is. There's the switch that controls the entire factory, and if I turn it on, uh, the entire factory will shut down. Oh, look at it. Look at it right there. And there it is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I had it on for one second and it broke. So that is why uh, I guess it was probably as soon as some of the other machines got the got some of the things that I had been taking away. <laughs> that It's just like, okay, and now it's done again. All right. All right. Well, that should begin with the, this should be the start of doing nuclear power now one of the things with nuclear power is that it does produce toxic waste and i don't know what that means <laughs> but i guess for right now what i'm probably going to do is i'm probably just going to use like this bottom floor where i was creating these coal generators before and now instead have a couple nuclear generators down here with rods feeding directly into them considering it's probably going to be built directly underneath the actual manufacturers there yeah right here I can still do even more than this, but this should work for right now. Also, I need to get out of this place. It is very radioactive. I mean, look, it's fine. It's fine. I, I still have plenty of these iodine filters and everything. And, you know, it's not that radioactive. It's only really a problem if you want to live a long time. Okay, well, I'm going to try and restore power to the factory for right now. I'm hoping that... It's not going to overwhelm me with nuclear waste immediately, but uh, we'll see. Things should be largely worked out in terms of having a little bit more efficiency around the factory, too. Although, one of the things that I do want to do is 
is start setting up drones. Because I do think that with the amount of stuff that I need right now to actually have this working efficiently, I'm going to need to... Well... Alright. Wait. I forgot I need... To, wait, give me one second. Yeah, I need to actually activate these things. Yeah, I know they're going to shut down, but that's okay. Alright. Just a little bit more radiation before I get back there. Okay, now let's start this up. I was saying that I still need more... Yeah, 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 I know. I was saying that I still need more input for a lot of the stuff that I'm doing in the factory. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, there we go. Production at almost 20,000. Still not enough for, for peak factory usage, but for like 10,000 right now, this should be pretty effective. All right, but yeah, I need to get things coming in a little bit faster, and the monorails are just not cutting it. it it's it, the, the amount of time that it takes to, uh, for monorails to go up and down hills and stuff like that. I even have now have a, a bauxite-specific train to try and and get up here and get, like, bauxite down to the, the aluminum a little bit faster. It's just still not fast enough. For, for 600 or so output, I need... Like, probably an entire fleet of drones. Which I should be able to make work for me. I have not done much of anything with drones as a... <sighs> more, more of these terrible, terrible... More of these terrible, terrible, uh, uh, stupid heavy modular frames I need. Oh, this is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> okay, now these are not like tiny drones. These are very large. <laughs> alright, alright, well... Hopefully the heavy modular frames especially are going to be worked out a little bit better. I moved steel production over to over to the the fluid cistern because I I just like it's using uh the the petroleum coke now because that's a very fast way to create a bunch of steel and it's much easier to just go since only two things are being created with steel it's much easier to just go ship some some of the iron in this area over here than it is to ship a bunch of petroleum coke back here. So I think that'll work out pretty well. Also, it frees up some carts then for doing for doing more aluminum, which I'm probably going to be needing now that I'm going to be starting up the the, the like leading edge production, as you can see on the upper right of the screen. But as of right now, this does seem to be functional. And hopefully that means that I'll be able to start getting... Production is kind of fluctuating wildly for the time being, though. <laughs> and again, I don't know about, uh... I don't know about that nuclear waste. I'm kind of worried about that entire thing as I'm doing this. Oh, yeah, you can see in the distance right there, there's the... There's the, the, uh, cooling towers going. Well... I, let, let's go see real quick before I go and uh, start up some of the drone work. God, I hope I don't fall out of the earth uh, swimming over here. Because I can see I can see the edge of the earth right there, by the way. It's probably fine. Let me see how fine it is. <laughs> I do have battery production up and running. And I am specifically making a lot more batteries than I need to actually create the stuff to do. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, by the way, there, there you go. <laughs> um, anyway. I'm creating a lot more batteries than I should need to actually... Oh, yeah, look at it go. You know, once again, nu nuclear waste does not look like this. It's not like a thin layer of tin between, between like, a bunch of green slime. It's, it's, it's concrete encased. It's got, like... It's got like 10 centimeters of concrete in there. And then on top of that, it's just it's just radioactive dirt, more or less. It's not even... Oh, yeah, I gotta go. Uh, since I redid the aluminum stuff, uh, it's now probably throwing petroleum coke in there or something instead. I, it should be fine, though, still. But, you, you know, they gotta kind of work that out to be correct. No, 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 it's, it, it's creating it just fine. Just gotta ask to, I guess, um get the delivery on. It's probably because I was taking a bunch of those to create, like, the blenders over in the uranium area in the first place. Well, anyway, I can create a bunch more power plants eventually, and that's sort of the plan. The only issue right now is that I should probably go get some more steel working for me. The only thing is that, of course, I do want to, real quick, uh, 
Can I at least create like two or something? I need screws. Okay, well, I can do that real quick. It's like I'm actually making screws right over here. Screw production has gone down a lot since the start of the game. I It used to be that I was making tons and tons of the things, but now this is the entirety of the screw section. This is it. It's all right here. Because it's it's like the, one of the alternate recipes I got, steel screws. That one steel beam, one every five minute to create 260 screws per minute. Yeah. Well, five per minute, not one every five minutes. That's that's not that's not the correct way to say that. But anyway, I also do have other screws around here too, so I'm just gonna go do that. Uh, I guess start making some of the drone platforms, and hopefully it's like yeah, the uh, the steel should start working for me, and then I can get started on nitrogen. It doesn't. It I didn't see a ton of nuclear waste in there. And I know eventually I'm going to be able to turn that into the, the non-fissile, you know, unfissionable uranium for the plutonium rods. And then that waste is, I don't know what I'm going to do. Eh, we'll see. Well, the obvious place to be setting drones is going to be right next to all the other logistics stuff that I have up here. Uh, so I guess a little bit off of uh, radiation station, as I'm now calling it. As you can see, even just in here, it's still quite radioactive. Man, I don't know if this is a good idea to bring it into my into my actual base, but whatever, it's fine, it's fine. So, I need two drone ports, I believe it is. And then I can just send them back and forth between stuff. And from what it says, you know, it's going to need batteries, but... Hopefully it's not going to be too difficult. I'll just set it right here. I, I can I can fix this up later. And then, uh, did grab some batteries. Should have plenty of them for right now. All right, no drone. Let me just uh, build that as well. Okay, right there. Requires a portable miner, which is weird. Weird to me. All right, and then I guess the other thing is that I just got to go set it up where I want it to go. Which is going to be, well... I I don't know if I want to keep the port here considering eh whatever it's it's still got plenty of room and it's on the it's on my you know huge uh very colorful sort of logistics floor so looking good looking good there's a thumbnail I guess anyway uh but yeah so this should work this should work well enough and I shouldn't have to worry too much about it Hope, I just really want to see how many batteries does this end up using. So I'm going to go over to the, the fluid place and then I guess I'll see what it says in terms of in terms of what it actually costs. And here is the newly created steel base. So from here I'm shipping I'm planning on shipping out both iron pipes and iron beams or steel pipes and steel beams. And that should be as simple as, I think, setting down a couple drone ports, like here and here. Yeah, like this entire area. Which, considering how huge these things are, I suppose that probably will still barely fit. Okay, then, sure. What, whatever, it's fine. It, it fits. That's the important part. Jeez. Uh, okay. Hook that up to power. Throw that down. I un I unmade the drone, which is a weird way to put that, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, yeah, no, it, that's it said missing miner, but I guess that's because I already made one and I don't have any more. All right. So, this port select destination drone port one. It yeah. Distance not too bad seemingly. Uh, wow, it only uses 2.89 per minute. Uh, 2.46 for a round trip. Uh, yeah, that's not as many batteries as I expected, I'm going to be real with you, given that, um... You know, wait, wait, I didn't actually put in the stuff... Uh, hey! Hey, can I, like, get in this? No, it's a drone, it's not a manned vehicle. Well, um... Okay, well, yeah, because right now, a a as of this point in time, I believe... Oh, wow, that goes, doesn't it? And then it gets really, really, uh, uh low frame rate. <laughs> but anyway, I was saying... Uh, okay, well, I guess I'm going to be doing logistics this way now. <laughs> Look at this. 
<laughs> Look at this compared to the, the trains. Oh, I'm sorry, trains, but I don't... I guess your services are unfortunately no longer required. Hmm. Well, anyway, I'm making 200 batteries per minute. I need like it. Let me see here, real quick. Uh, look at my look at my spreadsheet. I am currently consuming uh about I about 60 batteries a minute, I suppose. I don't know, 50 batteries a minute to be able to create the the oh one of the things that I have. I can't even remember what it's called. The um electro the magnetic generation unit, something like that. So that is no, I'm not going to power that by doing that. Yeah, the electro generation, the the magnetic generation unit, and that's you know it's got four thousand there, but that's not going to be something that I require presumably for a very long time. Ah, uh, we'll see. It does seem to take some time at drone port too, unless I need to have the destination be okay. Yeah, and then the is this port? Yes. Okay, now what's the round trip? It's still, okay, eight per trip. That's, well, okay, so that's a little bit more then. However, it's not that much more, especially given how fast this thing moves. I, and the other thing is that, uh, you know, I, I thought that it might be an eventuality that I'm going to need to create more batteries. So one of the alternate recipes that I did get as I was looking around in the uranium area is a one that seems to be a little bit more convenient to create. I mean, yeah, sure, it does require, like, plastic and alclad sheets, but it doesn't require me to, you know, ship in bauxite to my, to my, um, uh, base. Of which, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, I don't think is actually coming in anymore because... I switched up the routes for how how aluminum is made. Well, yeah, okay, that, that's going to be a problem um, eventually. For right now, though, I'm just going to go switch that up into being made a little bit different. Still, though, 200 is far more than enough to to actually, you know, require much of anything. All right, yeah, I think this should work. Okay, so next time, hopefully, I mean, ugh, God, I guess I'm gonna have to go do the nitrogen thing. I, it's like I found the, I found the actual thing, and then I got too bogged down with creating with more logistics, as always, and also just far more, more logistics as well as more, more uh, uh, the power, power generation. The power generation never stops, does it? All right, well. Yeah, this should definitely, this should definitely be good for shipping like this sort of stuff. And yeah, it is, it is very fast. Okay, it's going to be good for shipping everything. I'm not going to lie here. Like, yeah, it's, it's, look, look at the trains comparatively. Oh, no, not the trains. Well, anyway, next time I'm actually going to get to the, the final two phases, I think. 